On Saturday at Turfontein, we see the inaugural running of the Allied Steel Road on a Mission Mile, formerly known as the November Handicap and the Charity Mile, and we see the return of Mel Moose, the South African Triple Crown winner. He returns to racing along with a whole string of very, very talented horses. And we've had an opportunity to speak to his trainer, Mike de Kock. We've spoken to Sean Terry. We've also had a chance to speak to Paul Peter. And we think we've got most bases covered as far as that race is concerned. So let's go and have a look and see what these expert trainers have got to say about their runners for Saturday's Allied Steel Road on a Mission Mile. It's nice to have new blood in the sponsorship arena. Arun and uh, Warren Rippon with Allied Steel. And, and of course, this race is very aptly named the On a Mission Mile. And you're very, very handsomely representative, not least of all uh, with a horse called Tiro Del Fugo, who you've cut and may be on his way back. I'd love to hear where he is. Yes, yeah, so his last run was honestly um, very disappointing, and I, I couldn't really uh, you know, find a concrete reason, whether it be um, second run after a gelding or second run. Um, his coat um, hadn't turned. It has turned. It's not where it should be right now, but just on handicapping alone, uh, there must be some sort of outside chance for him. Okay. Cornish Pomodoro is a horse that we've seen, loves to run fresh. I must confess that I couldn't believe that he was allowed to start at such a ridiculous price, but that's him. And I'm not going to for one second doubt the fact that he'll be a fitter horse in this particular trip, which is right up his alley. Yes, I think this, this trip will suit him. I, I think if I look back on his form, he may not have seen out the, the 2,000 um, as we'd expected him to. So this mile might be a very good trip for him. Obviously, the deep draw you have to contend with, uh, but he does run well fresh, and we, we haven't given him a hard prep specifically for that reason. And once again, you know, a big outsider that is, that's going to land himself in the race in good condition. Seaham in front by two, three, Four lengths, second place of Sparkling Water, then Heart Swings, Saragon further back, but Sea Harm in isolation, and she'll win this with an exclamation mark. You have confided in me off camera that she is going for the Summer Cup. She still looks to have enough class at the weights to topple a really strongly fancied horse from the De Kock Yard. Um, yes, Andrew, she's a lightly raced filly. She had one blemish, which clearly wasn't, wasn't her run. Interestingly enough, she hasn't found herself on the... Uh, Summer Cup log, even though she has beaten horses that are on that log in features. Um, but nevertheless, for, for Saturday, she's had a good preparation in terms of my target being the, the Summer Cup. But her first run was good enough to expect uh, further improvement. She's very well weighted. And, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if she has to get into the hunt. Ikigai, cracking run at the Vaal last time out. And uh, a horse with bundles of talent and very versatile as well. Yeah, he's a very good horse, and uh, his three-year-old career was going really well. He won the the guineas. He just uh, stumbled in the in the in the classic, which may have been a bit a bit far for him. And he and he was caught a little bit wide and maybe over raced a bit. So he comes into this race third run after a rest of a really good weight, and average draw. But I think if he settles in the race, and um, I can't see why he hasn't got an each way chance. He's had two comeback runs. He's in. He's in um, also good health, and you know he's run to some very good horses at level weights. So to come into a handicap carrying bottom weight, weight decent draw. Uh, you know he he could be there. Wouldn't surprise me. The new race, which has very very kindly been sponsored by Warren Rippon and Arun, the On a Mission Mile. Yeah, look, um, Warren and Arun are always on a mission. That's one thing we do know. <laughs> Especially Warren. But, um, yeah, uh, I would say Malmus is, is, you know, he's definitely the better of the two. There's no doubt about it. He's had a long, nice rest, freshened up, come back extremely well. He's in a, as good a place as I've ever seen him. A bit of match fitness, that's all that's, that's against him. The mission is obviously later on. There are target races for him. This is a good place to start. Um, but I, I have not seen him happier for a good while. He obviously is not 100% wound up and will improve with the run. Al Mutana, he couldn't have done anything better than what he's done it and the way in which he's done it going into this race with a handy galloping weight. He's got a handy galloping weight. You know, as I said to you, he's not the division of 
Malmus. However, he does get a handy allowance and he's very fit. Al Mutana in the blue colours is just about to pick up the lead into the closing stages and Al Mutana now shows its class. Al Mutana set the standard. The fact that he came down in the ratings helped him win another two races um, leading into this, but he's going to have to up his game to be competitive there. Is the gilding a factor? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, I think he just, um, we probably overexposed him as a young horse, got a bit sour with the game. Naturally, he got overrated, as they always do. When he came back to a, um, a reasonable rating, he was competitive again. It's just as simple as that. We now get to the big fella, the horse that has done incredibly well. He's definitely the best son of Willow Magic Racing. He now gets his chance to shine over a mile. We know he's deadly over five, six and seven furlongs. This is his big moment. Yes, it's his big moment. Uh, there was nothing else on, op on option for him, so we said we'll take our chances over the mile. He did run second in the Dingans to catch 22 a year ago. Uh, he's a stronger horse today. He's a year older and uh, he's working really well. His stamina's up a bit and uh, if he stays a mile, he's going to be very, very competitive. It's a strong field. It's a, one of the stronger charity miles for the last few years. Uh, well done to Allard Steel Road for coming on board uh, and we're truly grateful and we hope that uh, MK could go close. Right, and if for any rhyme or reason the consistency for which he is so famous does not come to fruition, you've got the ever game, ever consistent and talented Asterix. Yes, Asterix is a good backup horse. Really, he's a hard knocker. Uh, he's, I think he's well in at the weights. He's got a good draw. He's working exceptionally well. Likes to sting out the ground. I think it'll be a nice inclusion for the punters out there for quartets. As they come to the 300 metre mark, and it's three or four or five lengths clear, and now into the final 200 and Desert Miracle, what more can one really say about this? This is scintillating performance. Desert Miracle going to win by, you name the number, I'll go for 10 lengths. Desert Miracle won it. Yeah, look, I was betwixt and between about where I ran her, and I eventually opted for draws, but then they went and scratched off the field in the fillies race because she was drawn a little wide so I hope I've done the right thing but the, the fillies in my opinion this year could be a little stronger than the Colts I don't know I might be wrong and if she is going to go on to do bigger and better things and go on to fillies guineas then she should show us that on Saturday but she's in a good space she's very well and you know I'm, she's making all the right noises at home the fact that this race will in all probability be broadcast by SABC, takes us back to the glory days of Top Sports and Martin Locke and many, many viewers that don't get to see racing on a regular basis. Yeah, I think that's, that's the, um, the problem with racing, that it's, um, it used to be in every household in the, in the form of SABC, on the radio, all that kind of thing. It is huge for us to get it back on SABC and... You know, I must uh, really thank the Four Racing Management Group for that. The, the industry needs to thank them for that um, because this is now another new audience. Uh, it's, uh, it's a fresh audience, really, really big, and it just shows you where, where Four Racing's headed. We, we need to get those glory days back. There's no doubt about it. It has to happen.